I am here to tell you a story, a story of the Mile Creek Massacre, where over 30 Aboriginal men, women, and children were murdered. In early May 1838, a group of some 40 Australian Aboriginal people, called the Quiamble, moved south and set up camp on Henry Dangar's Mile Creek Station, in New South Wales. The stockmen on Dangar's property quickly learnt that the Quiamble were friendly and gentle. The relations between the Quiamble and the workmen on the Mile Creek Station developed into an easy live and let live situation. And it became common for the stockmen to join the Aboriginal people after work. On the 9th of June 1838, a posse of 10 men heavily armed with muskets and swords approached the Mile Creek Station. The noise of the galloping horses filled the air with a sense of danger. The posse were hunting Aboriginals who were stealing cattle in another district. The Aboriginal people, fearful of attack, left their camp and ran to the workmen's hut, hoping their white friends would protect them. They could not. The posse of men wrote the Quiamble together. The Quiamble wept uncontrollably, guessing their fate. The sun had set, and the cold night air was rising from the creek. As the men took the Quiamble slowly towards the hills, gradually, the Quiamble prisoners, surrounded on every side, disappeared from sight. Twenty minutes later, the watchers at the hut heard two shots. <laughs> then silence and darkness fell upon the valley. In the morning a worker from the station, was confronted by a gruesome sight. Near the stockyard, was a pile of Quiamble bodies lying in a lake of blood. The murderers had drawn their swords, and cut the Quiamble to pieces. They had decapitated most of the babies and children. The men had tried to destroy the evidence of their crimes, by burning the bodies of their victims. But the fires had been only partially successful. Spread around the stockyard were piles of half-burnt bodies. The stench of death and decay was overwhelming. The ground was caked hard with dark pools of blood. An attempt was made to count the bodies. The dismemberment made the task impossible. 28 bodies were confirmed, however it is predicted that more than 30 Aboriginal men, women, and children were murdered. There were two trials following the massacre. In the first trial 11 men were captured and charged with the murder of one of the Aboriginal men. Although it was difficult to get evidence the local police magistrate built a strong case. The evidence only linked them with the murder of one Aboriginal man. The judge included these words in his speech to the jury. I must tell you that the life of a black is as precious and valuable in the eye of the law as that of the highest noble in the land. The jury returned a verdict of not guilty. After having retired to consider the evidence for only 15 minutes. The men had burnt the bodies and destroyed most of the evidence. But a child's rib bone was recovered. This could now be used as evidence for a new trial. In this trial, only seven of the men were charged with the murder of the unknown child. After hearing the evidence, the jury delivered a verdict of guilty. Judge Burton said, Prisoners at the bar, you have been found guilty of the murder of men, women, and children. And the law of the land says, Whoever is guilty of murder shall suffer death. The Mile Creek Massacre was the first time where white settlers had been executed under British law for the murder of Aboriginal people in Australia.